yeah we back we back now today's video is gonna be a follow-up video to when i dropped last month i forget what it was called because i actually took the video down but i was speaking about a young brother i believe he was 21 years old 20 years old he was a foreign exchange student from tanzania studying agriculture in israel and unfortunately during his time in israel the uh the attacks happened where the palestinians marched and descended upon israel and our good brother went missing for about a month and i did a video on it because nobody was really talking about it and i was like man you know i didn't really understand it right i thought it was about zionism i thought it was about uh, colonization i thought it was about oppression i thought it was about solidarity and i was taken aback when i discovered that black men are being taken hostage by the palestinians i was like man I thought the Israeli-Palestinian conflict was about colonization. I thought it was about taking the land back. I thought it was about fighting oppression. I thought it was about standing with the colonized people of the world, solidarity amongst blacks and Arabs. That's what I've been hearing, right? So I was really confused when I seen black men being taken hostage by the Arabs. And now, come to find out, we have discovered what happened to our good brother. So today I'm coming back with this follow-up video, and we're going to talk about it. Take a look up on the screen. Tanzanian national taken hostage by Hamas has been confirmed dead. moment of silence for our good brother of course i was hoping for a better outcome but we can't really be surprised man we know who we dealing with we dealing with the arab we dealing with the arab so we know what we dealing with i can never be surprised man i can never be surprised i would have been surprised if he came out alive that's what i would have been surprised about to be honest at this point man when it comes to the arabs man i can't even keep track bro lately it seems that the arabs been going on the offensive against us in a crazy way when you talk about what happened in Tunisia earlier this year, when you talk about what's happening in the Sahel, when you talk about what's happening in Sudan, and now we got this situation in Palestine. I can't even keep track, man. I can't even keep track. And yet and still, yet and still, even though their own brother got killed, black men will still defend the Arab. I'm telling you, the Arab is untouchable, bro. The Arab is Teflon. The Arab is bulletproof. The Arab is invincible. The Arab is unassailable. The Arab is Teflon. The Arab is indestructible. I guarantee the Arab, he could kill your brother, slap your sister, sell your mama into slavery, and the black man will still stand right there and defend him every day of the week, man. Every day of the week. Now, let's get into it, man. Let's jump into these articles. As you can see, final howering moments of Tanzanian student Joshua Malel's life caught on film before Hamas butchers murders him in cold blood during the October 7th attacks. Now, the video is way too graphic for me to uh, show you on um, on YouTube, but just to give you a description, uh, the video is not that long, but you see the brother surrounded by these savages, these subhuman, uh, these animals who claim they're fighting for freedom. They're fighting for their land back. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, we're fighting for freedom. We're be I'm being genocided. I'm being genocided. You have to hold hands in solidarity with me, the sand dwelling Arab, the desert dwelling Arab, the savage from the Middle East. Brother, I'm tired, of, man. Listen, brother, I'm tired. The only thing I can say is, bro, I'm I'm tired, bro. I'm tired, bro. I'm just I'm sick and I'm tired. I'm sick and I'm tired. And unfortunately, I can't really express how I feel in a true, authentic manner because my my channel would get flagged for hate speech. My channel would get flagged for hate speech, and my channel would get terminated by the morning if I really just spoke from the heart how I feel about them people, how I feel about the Arabs. My channel would be eliminated. So I'm gonna try to. I'm going to try to make this video in the best way that I can to express myself in the best way that I can without violating YouTube's guidelines in terms of service. Now, let's continue. A Tanzanian national who had been missing since being taken hostage by Hamas on October 7th has been confirmed dead. Joshua Malel, 21 years old, was a Tanzanian student who had been working as an agricultural intern in Israel near Gaza on October 7th. Malel is the second Tanzanian national confirmed to have been killed since October 7th. So, in fact, it was not just this brother right here. It was actually another brother as well. It was actually two of our brothers that was eliminated by the Arabs for no reason. For no reason at all, man. For no reason at all. You know, no reason at all, man. No reason at all. The same exact reason why they're killing our family in the Sahel for no reason at all. The same reason why they're killing our family in the Sudan for no reason at all. The same reason why they were killing our family in Tunisia for no reason at all, man. For no reason at all. The same reason why they beat and they kill our women in the Middle East for no reason at all, bro. For no reason at all. Zero justification. Now let's continue. Malel is the second Tanzanian national confirmed to have been killed since October 7th. Clarence Mtenga 
Another Tanzanian national was confirmed dead in November, and Tanzanian officials say they are in communication with Israel to repatriate his body back home for burial. Both Malel and Mtanga were one of the many Tanzanian students in Israel taking part in an agricultural internship program, which is part of an agreement between the governments of Israel and Tanzania. So this brother was not an enemy combatant. This brother was not a military man. He was not he was not on the front lines, you know, fighting for Israel. He was a black man minding his business, trying to get an education so he could come back home and provide for his family, become the man and become the patriarch of the family and make something of himself in society. He was trying to better himself, trying to elevate his station in life. That's what he was doing. That's what he was doing. He didn't deserve that. If you saw the if you saw the video, if you saw the video, man, them Arabs, bro. They had already shot him. He was already on the ground, dying, probably already dead. Dude took his boot, put his boot over his chest, and then emptied the clip of the rifle. Turned his head into a watermelon, bro. Blood splattering everywhere, bro. Close range gunshot with the fucking AK-47 type weapon, bro. That's what they did to our brother, man. That's what they did to him. And you still got black men that's gonna defend the Arabs, bro. I'm telling you, bro, the Arabs could do, there's nothing that the Arab could do that the black man will ever turn his back on the Arab, bro. I'm telling you, man. I'm telling you. Now let's continue. A few weeks after the attack, his father spoke to BBC, telling them that he spoke to Joshua on October 5th, two days before the onslaught. I said, be on your best behavior because you're somewhere new and make the most of the internship you're there to do. My son wants to make his fortune in agribusiness and become one of Tanzania's most successful farmers, his father said at the time, saying they were hoping he would return home from his studies to build a successful business for the family. Man, bro. Man, could you imagine? Could you imagine as a young black man, 21 years old, leaving home, first time leaving home, you're excited, you know, trying to get an education, you know, and your final moments in life is you surrounded by a bunch of savages, a bunch of barbarians, a bunch of <laughs> a bunch of vagabonds, a bunch of subhuman, a bunch of human excrement, and they just and they just shoot you dead in the street like an animal, dude. Can't believe it, man can't believe it but at the same time i can't be surprised i can't believe it but at the same time i can't be surprised because like i said we know who we're dealing with we're dealing with the a rap so we can't you know we can't be surprised man now let's continue clarence mtenga a 22 year old agricultural intern from tanzania is believed to have been killed by hamas terrorists he was missing for six weeks and thought to be held captive in gaza but on november 18th his body was identified and he was declared dead now, this is one this is our second brother from Tanzania that lost his life at the hands of those subhuman savages uh, those barbarians can't even find the adjectives to describe them but you know moment of silence for our good brother man moment of silence now let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media take a look up on the screen this person said they were shouting at him why did you lie to us? Maybe he did something that led to some combatant's death. I need the full context to judge. Now, listen. When it's the Palestinians losing their life, I don't see anybody talking about we need the full context to see what's going on. But, you know, when it's the black man losing his life, you know, we got to, you know, I, I need to understand the full context of the situation before I make a before I make a judgment. You know, I can't really condemn the Arabs just yet. Like I told you, the Arab is untouchable, bro. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what's so special about the Arab, but he's untouchable, man. He's untouchable. You know, we can't even condemn. If you saw the video, bro, I mean, what is what what context do we need? What context do we need? The black man looks scared for his life. He's over here to study agriculture. You know, he's on the ground already dead. They put his they put their boot over his chest. They shoot him point blank range, dead in the head when he's already dead. I mean, what what context do you need outside of that? Like, it is what it is. Like I told you, the Arab is untouchable. Now let's continue. This person said, this is a classic Mossad operation by sacrificing a naive black kid for propaganda purposes. Just ask yourself, how did an innocent Tanzanian student end up in the middle of the Israel-Palestinian war? Don't be fooled. <sighs> man, I'm telling you, brothers, y'all brothers be disappointed to me, man. When the topic, when the topic of the Arab comes up, black men just, they just, they come up short every time, bro. Like, the same way I keep it real with, with the women, bro, I got to keep it real with the men, too. I got to keep it real with my brothers. When it comes to the topic of the Arabs, bro, black men soft like some tissue paper, bro. Soft like some toilet paper, man. That's how I know. I know for a fact, if I lose my life at the hands of the Arabs, I know it ain't going to be no black man running to defend the Fakari de Salim. Y'all all, all going to fold like a cheap chair and bow down to the Arab. Bunch of 
man listen bro i told you uh, i was I'm, I'm trying to keep the video clean but i'm telling you when it comes to the topic of the arab black men are shameful black men are shameful and i'm talking about black men across the world shameful shameful your own brother got got killed like a piece of garbage and you talking about this is this is secret Mossad operation i need the full context of the situation shameful shameful now let's continue this person said how did a student from israel enter gaza that's heavily guarded and constantly surveyed can you prove that it is indeed hamas does this excuse the killing of thousands of palestinian kids by israel can you prove that he was not a spy idf has foreigners in their ranks <sighs> now just to avoid condemning the arabs this dude then made up a whole storyline in his head then fabricated a whole narrative in his head that this guy is a secret spy a secret mercenary working for the idf trying to gain intelligence on the arabs and the arabs had to kill him because you know he was a secret spy working for the israelis to man listen a regular just a regular kid studying agriculture trying to get into agribusiness he was here to study he wasn't here he wasn't here for this bullshit bro he wasn't here to get involved in your in your fucking palestinian israeli conflict but just because some black i don't want to say all black men some black men are so scared to death to even raise their voice towards the arab look how look, they just lie on their own brother they'll tell lies on their own brother create a fabricated narrative on their own brother just to defend just to defend the arab who would eliminate you in the street like a piece of garbage shameful some of y'all boys is shameful shameful now let's continue this person came into my comment section in my community tab and he said this why was he out there fighting for israel and i told him he was a student studying agriculture in israel on a scholarship man i don't know if this person is black but look how look how everyone is trying to justify the black man's death oh man i need context for the situation oh man he was a secret spy for the idf he was a secret spy for the israelis oh man he was fighting for the israelis bro he wasn't fighting for nobody else except his family so he could make something of himself in society so he can go back home and have a career have an occupation have a job so he can contribute to the family that's what he was doing he was trying to elevate his station in life not trying to lose his life but we have such little respect for the black man that we would rather fabricate narratives instead of condemning the arabs as we are supposed to just to avoid condemning the arabs look how they would tell lies on a black man on the on a dead black man that lost his life to violence at the hands of arabs i don't understand it the arab would never do it for you bro the arab would never create lies the arab would never lie on his brother on his dead brother that was killed he would never lie on his dead brother's grave just to defend you, a black man. The Arab would never do it. But you, a black man, will lie on your own brother, tell lies on your own brother, fabricate stories and narratives on your own brother to defend a desert dwelling camel riding Arab who don't got no fucking love for you. You boys should be ashamed to call yourselves black men. Now, let's continue. This person said, my interpretation is that they're accusing him of knowing Arabic and saying, don't lie to us. I believe they wanted information out of him, but could not get it. So one of them impulsively knocked him out, shot him and killed him. I think they did so, so he would not assist the IDF. Now, I don't know if the brother spoke Arabic. I know there's a Muslim population in Tanzania. Uh, I believe the president of Tanzania right now, I believe she's a Muslim. Last time I checked. Uh, but like I said, for whatever reason, man, the Arab Muslim don't got no love or solidarity or respect for the black Muslim. I never understood that still don't understand that but it is what it is let's continue this person said i think he was spying for the israelis <sighs> this person said it's a war zone it's expected to happen especially from a people who are being genocided now so it's a war zone so innocent black men who are studying agriculture and going to school should expect to be killed in the street like dogs by arabs that's what he's saying that's what he's saying to us it's a war zone you should have expected this to happen so joshua should have expected to die like a dog in the street because because it's a war zone okay it's a war zone so he came to the country before the october 7th attacks before the before the war popped off so he should have expected to die at the hands of arabs that's what he's saying that's what he's saying that's what he's saying you boys should be ashamed, man. You boys should be ashamed. 
you boys should be uh, ashamed of yourself. Ashamed of yourself, bro. Ashamed of yourself, man. That's all I can say. If I if I said how I truly felt, my channel would be terminated. So all I'm gonna say is, you boys should be ashamed of yourself. Let's continue. This person said that student had no business going to and studying from an apartheid state, even less so going to where the oppressed stay. Nothing about this story smells right. So instead of condemning the Arabs who took our brother's life, we are condemning our dead, our fallen brother, because he should have never been there in the first place. <laughs> oh my God. Keep in mind, keep in mind the country was peaceful before Hamas invaded and descended upon Israel. He went to Israel to study before the attacks happened. When he came to the country, it was peaceful. So he should have no business going there and it's his fault that he lost his life. That's, that's all I'm hearing from the conversation on social media. I'm not seeing any condemnation of the Arabs at all. I'm seeing everybody placing their condemnation on the dead black man who got bullets to the head. Meanwhile, when it comes to the Arab, there isn't a single foul word to be said, not a single ounce of condemnation in the direction of the Arabs. So far, all I see is condemnation in the direction of the dead black man. I'm the only one. I'm the only one standing in solidarity with my brother. The only one. Everybody else standing in solidarity holding hands with the Arabs. Even when they kill your own brother, kill him in the street like an animal, send him back home in a box, you'll still stand in solidarity and hold hands with the Arabs. Can't believe this shit, bro can't believe it bro even lying on the brother talking about he was a secret spy for the israeli defense forces lying on him bro lying on him anyways let's continue this person said damn i can't believe blacks are downplaying this guy and blaming your brother for his own death can't believe it either man this person said they continue to shoot the random africans dead body in the head in the longer video yeah, like I said, if you saw the video, man, um, after he was already on the ground, you know, not even moving, probably already done passed away. Then they put their boot over his chest and they emptied the a clip point blank range, close range with, you know, not no little handgun. It's talking about a big, you know, them big rifles, big rifle, close range, you know, brain splattered all over the pavement. Yeah. So listen, obviously, like I'm trying to understand where would that level of hatred come from? Because it's one thing to shoot somebody in self-defense, you know, heat of the moment. But when you execute somebody and then you stand over the dead body and then you unleash all the rest of the, all the remaining ammunition and you put your boot over their chest, bro, that's hatred, bro. That's hatred. That's not no, that's not no, you know, we had a shootout and it was the heat of the moment. No, that's, that's execution. That's pure blooded hatred, hatred for what? for a 21 year old agriculture student from tanzania what does he have to do with your fight against the so-called israeli uh settlers what does he have to do with that what does he have to do with that you big and bad you running from you running from bullets and rockets from the israelis but you got time to bring aggression and violence towards the black man <laughs> man listen one thing for sure i don't got no love for y'all boys i never felt nothing for y'all boys when i turn on the news and i hear what's happening to y'all people i don't feel shit I don't feel a single ounce of emotion. I don't feel a single tinge of emotion because I know for a fact you don't got no love towards my people. So when I turn on the news and I see what's happening over there in the Middle East, I promise you I don't feel a thing. I promise you I don't feel a single thing. You want to know what gets me in my emotions? When I turn on the news and I hear that, you know, 40 unarmed civilians were massacred by Islamic jihadists in the Sahel. That's when I feel emotional. That's when I feel emotional. When I hear about the black babies in Sudan, being hunted down by them Arab militiamen. That's when I feel emotional. When I hear about what's happening in the Middle East, I don't feel nothing. I don't feel shit, bro. I don't feel shit. Y'all talking to me about black Arab solidarity? Ain't no fucking black Arab solidarity. I don't feel shit, bro. I don't feel nothing. It's y'all boys crying for the Arabs, butt kissing the Arabs, tap dancing for the Arabs, kissing the boots of the Arabs, kissing the butts of the Arabs. That ain't me. That ain't me. It's never been me. Never give a fuck, bro. Let's continue. This person said, Sometimes I pity the people of Palestine, but then again, I wonder if they would pity my dark skin to the IDF make them bleed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This person, he said this to Al Jazeera. This is an African like me being murdered by Hamas. Do you expect me to support these animals? I don't expect you to do nothing, brother. I don't support no subhuman savages and I don't expect you to do that either. So anyway, let's continue. This person said, 
I'm sure this African student was part of the apartheid apparatus that was suppressing the Palestinian population and deserved such a horrific death at the hands of Hamas. <laughs> oh man, obviously that person being sarcastic, but it's something to it's something to talk about, right? Uh, why did a 21 year old agriculture student from Africa deserve such a violent death? Like it's one thing to just you know to just shoot somebody, you know, I guess to shoot them one time, but when you're talking about you know stabbing them. And then shooting him And then when he's on the ground Emptying the clip into his head Close range What did he do to deserve that? What did he do to deserve that? I mean Even going back to the video I dropped last night Entitled The Arab Problem in Africa Where I spoke about what's happening in the Sudan What did those black men in the Sudan do To deserve what they're going through? What did they do to deserve that? You know When you examine what's happening To our women in the Middle East Like the women that go to the Middle East For job opportunities And you hear about the abuse they suffer Sometimes they even lose their life What did they do to deserve that? These are questions that need answers You know These are questions that need answers Anyways This person said Black lives do not matter on this planet Rest in peace young man We shall treat the Palestinians the same here In Africa And on that note I think I'll end the video. It's your boy Nevercard that's Celine. Back in the building, yes indeed. Cash app up on the screen. Rest in peace to our fallen soldiers, man. Rest in peace to our brothers, man. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came at the famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart would be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genders. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling the tension. Enemy watching me, blocking my vision. Care for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need it protected. Ready for war like a young Monte Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour, they wage. I got business. This shit is an art, and they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you ain't caught. Run to the check and I do it for sport Babylon falling, I go to the source Packing my luggage and go overseas Shorty be with me and she so at least Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey Secret intelligence probably gon' murder me Don't fuck with brands cause nigga I'm Haitian Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces